So coming back to the second part of the suspension arm demo, um, let's talk about uh, the topology optimization part. So just as a reminder, topology optimization is creating the best material distribution in a given design space. So basically meaning um, using varying finite elements uh, with a so-called density parameter to find, for example, lightweight, uh, the lightest weight for a structure or the maximum stiffness or the maximum frequency structure um, due to the external loading. So for the loading loading part, we did the first um, simulation, which was a multi-body simulation to extract the forces on a finite element model. The second part of the webinar is now how to set up the optimization task uh, using objective functions and areas which should be allowed to um, vary during the topology optimization. This will result in a simulation which will take some time to complete uh, a couple of minutes. And uh, finally, we can deduct the cat geometry, meaning we can use the result of the topology to export it to a CAT system for further usage in our design. Now, that's the part that we are going to optimize. It's the pivot link between the arm uh, with, with the wheel attached to it and the frame um, of the motorcycle. And we're going to use the, as mentioned, optimization forces from there kinematic results. So um, for example, using a road event, or like in our case, we didn't use a road event in our first demo. We just used a single event, um, which would result in a single force, making it a bit easier uh, in, in, in terms of computation time and so on. All right, now that was the result of the first simulation. Let's start with the topology simulation now. Now that's the same model as used before. So you will see the motion result here resulting in a um, displacement and forces on the part. The only thing that I did different is I replaced the original part with a maximum design space. So the design space here is basically a part that I extracted from either a CAT system or I could use the geometry function within Altair Inspire to create such a structure. This structure here is basically now the maximum geometrical area in which the material can be distributed. Now, what I need to define here is first a material law. So this part here should now not be rigid as it was before, but I need to define a flexible material law, meaning a Young's modulus for this part. That's done in the structural tab here. You can go to the materials section and within the materials section, you can choose either from user-defined materials, which means your own parameters that you can enter, or you can choose from a pre-existing material library, which for example, contains titanium alloys, aluminum or steel materials. So for our part here, let's uh, select the part and choose a titanium alloy for the topology optimization. All right, now, as mentioned, we did the motion analysis. So we have uh, forces available. For example, here, a maximum force of 13.5 kilonewton on this link, which is now acting as a force on the pivot. Um, we have other forces like up here of 9,500 um, and another force of 3,000 3,500 down here. Now, as you can see, the forces are varying over time. So we have like a one second event, um, which results in different forces at each different time. And now the question is, which one to use? 
for my structural optimization and analysis. And that's defined here in the analyze menu. So here you can choose which part to analyze, which is this one. You can then choose um, which finite element mesh size to use and you can define which load to use. So either you can use one peak load in our event. It's, uh, as you could see, only one single event with a maximum force or maximum peak load at a certain time, um, which would then create one maximum loading event. In other cases, it might um, be more reasonable or useful to use uh, evenly spaced samples. So for example, if you have large variations in your loading history due to, for example, bumpy road, in that case, it would probably make more sense to use five or 10 or 20 samples or even all samples from your motion simulation, which of course, again, means that you have a higher computation time. But in our case, as we have just a single event, let's use the maximum peak load and then run the first analysis here. Now, as I have prepared this, um, I can hopefully show you the results of this analysis already, um, which means I can check for the analysis results that I have prepared for this model. So as you can see here, um, not too much is happening except for when the maximum force occurs. So here at the maximum force, you will see the stress and strain result for this part. For example, um, with a limit of 75 Newton, you will see the most stressed areas. You can use the slider here to reduce the area and isolate only the maximum stressed areas, um, which are subsequently used for the optimization. So that's um, basically the first analysis that we did here. Um, as it took some time, I just used the predefined results that I had here. And now I can go on to the optimization part. For example, I can either use the stresses uh, that I determined in the analysis and use them in the optimization. Um, or I can go and uh, use a set setup of stiffness, which means uh, maximizing the material stiffness, um, leading to a result that has low strains and low stresses overall. Uh, one thing I need to do before the optimization is I have to check if I have to find a design space for the part here. So I um, click the pivot link. I go to the left hand side for my um, entity properties or property editor. And here I can define the design space, yes or no. If I click it and mark it as a design space, it allows now for optimization. So optimization is basically reducing the material in this selected area now. Um, all the other areas that I didn't check um, will not reduce the material. Now, if I go to the optimization menu, it will ask me basically for the same thing, um, to either use the peak load or use evenly distributed time samples. Again, I use the maximum load um, on this structure um, to be used in the topology optimization. Now, what can I do in addition to defining the design space? I need to define it, a name of the optimization run. I need to then define the type of optimization that should be run, which is, as mentioned before, a topology optimization for my model. Now, there are other optimization techniques, like, for example, optimizing the wall thickness or optimizing the shape of a part, um, which can be used subsequently in further simulation steps. But the first one, deducting the optimal material layout is usually a topology optimization. All right, um, what to define next? I need to define the objective function, which is, for example, minimizing the mass, or in our case, let's choose maximizing the stiffness. Maximizing the stiffness means keep as much material or keep as much stiffness as possible in the design area, which will then lead to a low deformation, low strain model, resulting also in low stresses. Um, in addition, 
I need to define a so-called mass or design constraint, uh, for example, using only 20% of the design area. So that means 80% should be removed. The remaining 20% should be used in a way that they care or produce an optimum maximum stiffness. All right, so the optimization task here is use 20% of the material to produce a maximum stiff result. Now, what else needs to be defined here? I need uh, to define the so-called wall thickness or minimum thickness, which is a measure of the different ribs and features that you will see in your topology optimization. So if I give it, for example, one millimeter here, a thickness of minimum one millimeter, it will allow for finer thinner ribs and thinner features of your optimization. On the same hand, it will basically yeah, have a longer stimulation time. So if you use a very low minimum thickness with fine features, it will create a finer mesh size. And by this, it means it will create a longer runtime. Um, on the other hand, if the minimum thickness is very high, let's say 100 millimeters, it will create a very coarse, a very rough optimization, probably not uh, the result you, you desire or you wish to see. So therefore, somewhere in between, um, deducted from your mesh size, for example, you can use um, your average mesh size times three, and that would be a reasonable start um, for your minimum thickness. So in this case, I used eight millimeter as a minimum thickness. So what I have defined now is create a topology use 20% of the material, which is my design constraint, to produce a result with maximum stiffness, which is my objective function. And now I can click on run. Now, again, I already did start a run and got a result. So therefore, let's check for the result so we don't have to wait for too long. And that's the optimization result that I got with the parameters that I just showed you. Now, what you will notice is that the optimized structure is unsymmetric. So you will get basically a design here, which is not symmetric, but which is due to the fact that the overall assembly isn't symmetric, right? So your loading on this structure is unsymmetric, leading to an unsymmetric topology optimization result. Okay, so therefore what you can do now is you can define a second optimization. So you can go back to your design space and in the structure menu, you'll find so-called shape and symmetry controls. So here you can Go on symmetry, check your design area, and now deselect or select the areas of symmetry, meaning that you could deduct now a topology result, which allows for a symmetric uh, result. So even if the loading is unsymmetric, the final topology should be symmetric, um, forcing the topology into that direction. In addition, there are so-called shape controls. For example, you can define um, a casting constraint, which would mean you define an area of um, basically your tooling where the tool would separate, um, leading to different results um, for your topology again. Or if you like, you could also define a printing plane. So if you want to print it in a certain direction, the blue face here would be the base plate of your printer. And along the printing direction, um, the program would force the structures to have an angle larger than 45 degrees, leading to less support structures and less material in the 3D printing process. Now, to create a second optimization, you would just need to start the optimization run with the second setup. So this change that I did is now only the symmetry using a second run and you will get a second result here. Here in the model browser, you'll see 
that there had been the first result, which I just showed you, and then there has been a second result based on the symmetry that I enforced with the symmetry shape control, which I just showed you. But that's basically the symmetric result leading to an optimum material distribution, but considering the symmetry. Now, in addition, as mentioned, you could define a printing direction or you could define a casting um, direction and so on, um, creating different results. What we'll also notice if you go to this result here, um, you can further manipulate um, the final result by using this um, topology slider, which now occurs here. Topology slider will now add or remove material based on the optimization density, right? So in an ideal world, you would have a density of zero or one for each element. In the real results, you have a density of 0 0.8 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.1 for some elements. And you can add, for example, the 0 0.1 elements, meaning the low density, low material um, results by moving the slider to the right, which would now create a safer structure, right? So you would now have a safe or safer um, structure considering stresses and strains. Um, if you go to the left-hand side of the slider, you would probably see like a, a higher risk structure removing um, the low density elements. Or if you go to the very left, you would even see some gaps in the model. So basically, this slider is an interpretation of your results. Um, you move it until you have a closed structure, which seems reasonable to you. You can also derive different structures by moving the slider multiple times and exporting it multiple times. And if you have reached basically a structure that is closed and seems reasonable to you, then you can click on this fit button and the fit button will create a geometry model as a step or surface model from your optimization result, um, which has been done here. So again, um, I just show you here the result, which has been deducted using the fit polynerbs function here. So now that's a geometry file, that's a surface file, which you can use in the save menu and export it, for example, as a parasolid or as a step file to your CAT system and uh, create your design from there. All right, now that has been the optimization setup process. As you can see, it's quite straightforward. So once you have your forces, either from multi-body or from other sources, the optimization setup in Inspire is done quite easily and will produce uh, one or several results. So just to mention, you can, of course, now use the optimization approach to create different results. For example, for the 3D printing process using the mentioned overhang angle. But of course, you could also create other manufacturings than this first concept. So for example, you could use different scenarios. So using the same model again and again for multiple optimizations. So for example, let's see five or 10 optimizations using, for example, um, the machining constraint uh, shape control, using the casting shape control, or using the 3D printing shape control, which will then lead basically to a few variations, to a few variants. And of course, now as an engineer, it's your task and your, your time to make a trade of studies, which parameters are most important to you. Is it more of the cost part? Then you would probably go for conventional casting or machining. Uh, if you want to have a most lightweight part, then you would probably go more to the 3D printing and selective laser melting process. And in the next demo, I'll show you how to simulate the manufacturing process of, for example, a selective laser melting part that has been optimized using Altair Inspire. So thank you for attending so far and uh, hope to see you in the next demo for the 3D printing as well. Bye.